we've reached the point now in this conversation about loving unconditionally, which uh, is broadly based on your book, Unconditional Love, and Unlimited Way of Being. And uh, you've explained to us so far that we have a spiritual aspect to ourselves, a, a divine aspect. And last time uh, we, we looked at how we may align ourselves uh, with this and how by aligning ourselves with this and by the, the flame of unconditional love which, which is there within, uh, we, we can open all sorts of uh, new possibilities to ourselves. And so this, this next conversation is going to be uh, based around the chapter in your book called Tapping the Unlimited. And I'll just read the, the paragraph uh, that introduces the chapter. Uh, we have the power and potential to experience life in its many manifestations. To the seeker who desires more, the universe awaits our call and then rushes forth flooding our world with infinite wisdom, power, and unconditional love. The journey has just begun and the end is never complete. Life unfolds its riches to us and allows everyone to partake of the incredible bounty. It only asks for love in return, boundless, unconditional love to all creation. As it is given, so shall it return. Okay, take it away please. Well, this is the part of the journey where we are moving into the direct conscious living of our newfound awareness. Now we've you know, gone through the experience of recognizing unconditional love within, we've gone ahead and understood that we have this incredible well, this limitless fount of, of love within us and that all this outer seeking, all this external focus that we have perhaps been living our life by, we're now drawing ourselves within, recognizing this unconditional love by going within, by acknowledging our thoughts and feelings, by recognizing our personal power and our potential. We're expanding our awareness, we're expanding our consciousness. Where do we go with this? Well, it's really like beginning to live life anew. It, it's literally like going from having lived life in a very quite unconscious mode where we, again, acted and reacted to so many things in our external environment, people, places, and things that, you know, come into our lives and, and experiences that we take in, and then we, we somehow formulate an opinion or a judgment or observation, and then we go back out and recreate it quite unconsciously. You know, and certainly, I, again, I always refer back to my own life. I, I realize how dramatically different my life has been once I started to go within and actually acknowledge the greater aspects of myself, acknowledge my potential and acknowledge that I actually had a, a, an actual creative aspect to me that was involved in all these experiences and that things weren't just happening to me, that I was actually driving them with my own lack of awareness. Mm -hmm. So now we've got this expanded awareness, we are acknowledging you know, that we're expanding our consciousness and we're recognizing many more dimensions where do we go next? Well, now comes the fun part, literally, is that we get to go forward creating more consciously. We get to go forward taking this conscious awareness of all this newfound inspiration, newfound awareness that literally has always been there. And this is part of the irony of our journey is that, you know, we are always capable, whether we're aware of it or not. We're always responsible whether we're aware of it or not. The creation goes on. It's just that now we have the ability to actually create consciously, being aware of our thoughts and our feelings, being aware of our past, our present, and our future, being aware of our potential, being aware of how we act and interact affects the world. And in fact, that is probably the, the greatest new piece of information is that we are consciously affecting the world right where we are. So we're either consciously affecting it positively or negatively, and again, not a, a distinction of somehow being bad or good or right or wrong is that we are either adding to with love or we're detracting with not love. And when we detract with not love, it tends to be destructive, which is why we tend to call it a negative energy because it tends to take away rather than add to. Love is something that just continues to expand. So if we allow the love to expand from within our heart and expand out into the world, 
then we are going to affect the world as we would term more positively because our love will beget more love and as more love goes out more love will be able to be tapped into and then more love will be our experience where we've come from where i was where most of us on the planet you know in this more unconscious state we are reacting to more destructive elements, more destructive suggestions, negative thoughts, negative feelings, fear, doubt, worry, gain, guilt, shame, you know, a whole myriad, anger, hatred, bigotry, prejudice, all these things that are literally just unconscious reactions to the world where we begin to create a real strong um, view of the world as a very negative, destructive reality blaming everything outside of ourselves because we're not recognizing how we're actually adding to this overall uh, negative experience. So we're taking this previous way of living, we're now we're going through this expansion process, this understanding, this inner awareness, and we're going forward. Well, we will still walk each step just like we did before. So we're going to learn through experience. Now we realize we have a choice. We can either learn through negative experience that we unknowingly or unwittingly entertained and brought into our world, or with this newfound awareness, we realize we can start to truly create with love. We can actually start taking each step with a deep breath, with a notion and understanding that we are the source of love. We are the ability to bring love into the world. We have the ability to heal that which is not love in our life. We have the ability to let go and detach, forgive, release, uh, all the things we've been talking about as a way to clear ourselves so that we can be a, a more pure vessel in a way, a, a more pure vehicle of love so that we can be out in the world and, and rather than acting and reacting to everything that comes into our path, we can actually be the ones that go out into the world and make a difference by acknowledging the bigger picture. Because in fact, that is what the whole inner awakening does for us is we realize it's a far bigger picture than our limited viewpoints have been. You know, if we are sensory driven and we limit ourselves to the five senses, then we're missing a whole lot of life. That's what was happening to me. I was missing out on a whole lot because I interpreted everything through the five senses. And although they're wonderful in their own right, they are extraordinarily limited in comparison to what I now understand that opens me up in so many different ways that makes me consciously aware of the physicalness of my very being, you know, the, the understanding of what goes through my body and how my body responds, how my emotions trigger, how my feelings, uh, you know, bring me to other types of awarenesses that the senses can't necessarily understand or dictate. The same with my mind, you know, if I'm simply holding on to old traditions, old beliefs, you know, very limited ways of looking at life, you know, the brain is quite capable of, of staying very rigid when we open up our heart, we also open up our mind. When we open up our mind, then the mind releases its grasp on all these details that we formerly thought were so incredibly important. We open up to potentials and the mind says, okay, you know, maybe I don't know it all. Let me see what else is out there. Let me rethink the perspectives that I've been holding for a lifetime or lifetimes. Let me look at life, you know, through new eyes. And of course, all of this, as we now understand, is driven by this grand divine whole part of ourselves, loosely labeled our higher self. Again, you know, this, this open up for everybody's going to interpret what they would consider um, their divine aspect. But what we've concluded and understood is that, you know, we're spiritual beings having human experience, not human beings seeking a, a spiritual experience. Mm -hmm. That changes the very fundamental nature of how we view life. This holistic grand view of ourselves, this part of us that is aware of the solutions, the part of us that is aware of who we are, who we were, who we're going to be, and, and gives us the guidance and the inner awareness of how to take that next step. When we align ourselves physically, emotionally, mentally, and spiritually together as a holistic being, that makes for a very different world than when we're fragmented, when we're out of balance, when one moment our health is calling us to be very present in our body and the next moment our emotions are running rampant and we're, we're doing things that we would never do under normal circumstances, but we have no control over our emotions or our mind is so rigidly focused on something that we are worrying so intensely that we create stress 
that throws everything else out of balance. But we're so distinctly separated from our higher self, from our greater self, that we have no faith or trust in ourselves. You know, this whole journey of loving unconditionally, when we accept ourselves, we accept our grandness, our, our majesty, our magnificence, our potential, our beauty, our harmony, our joy, that makes for a different world in ourselves. And when we bring that new self back into the world around us, we begin to have a very different impact with those around us. We become somewhat of a lighthouse, somewhat of a model, somewhat of a reflection of greater potentials, just as others have come along in many ways over our lifetime and given us insights and awareness and understandings just by their presence to see life differently. We're saying, let's take the whole package. Let's bring all of us into this new world that is going on right now. You know, one of the things that is so extraordinary about this particular time on our planet is there's never been a time where there is so much information, so much potential, and with that, so much chaos that we've ever seen at one time globally everywhere on the planet simultaneously. And this is really speaking to this inner awakening. You know, I can look back in the late 80s when I started to awaken and there were a certain number of people that were beginning to awaken in a larger way, in a greater mass. And I was one of them and very fortunate to have been one of them in the sense that I didn't know it was coming. You know, I did not have any preconceived awareness that I was, you know, going to awaken to my greater potential. And yet once I started to, I started to realize that there were already resources out there. Well, in the past couple of decades, those resources have multiplied exponentially. The examples of those that have been walking this way with greater love in their heart is showing up everywhere in the planet and is in every corner of the world. So we have enormous potential right now. And of course, with that comes all the negative understandings, the destructive understandings that we have also been carrying, and they're coming up to be looked at and to be healed and released. And for those of us that are choosing unconditional love, we get to go out there by our own choice, by our own grandness, and say, okay, I'm going to love these experiences higher. I'm going to bring love because now I understand love. You know, when I didn't understand love, I looked for it externally. There are still plenty of people out there looking for it externally, and perhaps by our modeling, by our being more unlimited, that we might be of service in some great way to show people of their own potential. Mm. So the journey is going to be the experience, and the experience is going to unfold uniquely. And you know, no one of us can tell another one what that will look like for another. We simply need to follow our heart and take each step that is right for us. That's how we move into the unlimited, by tapping the unlimited, by tapping all this new awareness trusting ourselves, retrusting ourselves, you know, having the strength, having the courage to move forward in our experience by being more present in the moment, by being aware of our thoughts and our feelings, by recognizing that we already have the love within and that we can share this love externally. That's how we move forward with the strength and wisdom. And of course, it's driven by the speed um, you know, speed is probably not even really relative at this case, but for those that, that want to move fast, um, you know, we'll move through lots of experiences that will make us aware of, of all these things more quickly. We can also take a bit more of a relaxed pace. The choice, though, is being conscious, being conscious of the fact that we are moving forward and that we are following the inspiration of our heart and we're walking the path and a conscious way and no longer just simply being unconscious and reactive to everything around us. We're being more aware of our truth in relationship to those around us. We're letting go of the old suggestions, the old beliefs, the old traditions, the old patterns, the old habits, and saying, I choose to be a creative, spontaneous being with love in my heart. What will that look like? It will be unique to every single person because that's where love is most intrinsically grand and beautiful in its own right is that love is filled with diversity. So it's not for any one of us to look like any other one. It's for each of us to sing and dance to the tune of our own heart. And in that diversity, make for a spectacular kaleidoscope of potential, just like nature does with us. You know, nature is different everywhere in this world and it's constantly changing. So are we everywhere in this world and we're constantly changing. When we flow with change, when we flow with expansion, when we flow with goodness, then everything sings to that tune of diversity and sings to that tune of love. When we don't, 
we reap the negative benefits of destruction and chaos and everything else. So trusting our heart, that's the place where we tap the unlimited. And moving forward is how we unfold this potential. So when we start tapping the unlimited potential within us, um, I guess that for most of us it would be within the context of our lives as they are today. Or, or are we going to really have to aim to start with a completely blank sheet? Is this where you know different, different people will tackle it differently? Everyone's unique, as you said. I think everyone's going to, to approach it uniquely in the sense that, that the whole set of belief systems, perspectives, you know, no matter how we grew up in a childhood, you know, if there were several siblings, for example, in the same household, in relatively the same age time period, everything, you know, being generally the same, each child is going to be filled with unique gifts, talents, and perspectives. You know, as I've mentioned before, you take twins and put them in a car and go down the street, they cannot possibly see exactly the same thing the same way, because however close they are, they are still different. And they will look at things differently. They will see different things at the same, you know, in the same moment, each one will see something different and experience things and interpret things differently. So the collective combination will make it unique under each person. Where we are looking at the general ideas, the general framework is that we will move from this linear perspective that most of us have lived by and have been taught by and, and grounded into this understanding it's past, present, future. We tend to walk around talking about our past. We tend to relish our, our past accomplishments. We might have the odd hope and dream, but we really rely on whatever we consider our strengths and weaknesses, and we tend to focus on past experiences. We tend to, you know, regurgitate literally everything that happened yesterday and the day before yesterday or years ago this newfound expansive awareness when we start to tap into our unlimited potential, we kind of reverse this trend. We start to look at future, present, past. And in that sense, we're not talking about future in exactly a linear space. We're not looking at our future as saying, well, the next step will be, or the, where I'm going will be kind of goal oriented or an assumption because we're still in a way using our experience of the past to say, I think I want this, therefore my future, I want that in my future, so I'll move towards that goal in the future. Where we're shifting this is future now is more multidimensional. Future is considered our potential. Mm -hmm. Who am I becoming? Who do I want to become? What would I like to experience in my life? And when we start to set up these intentions, when we start to ask new questions of ourselves, when we start to open up to new potentials that we never considered before, then ideas that we had not conceived of prior to this will start to come in as we unfold ourselves. Then this potential becomes more of our present because as we keep experiencing them, these new potentials, and we act upon them in the present moment, they become more of our present experience. And as we move you know, forward, outward, upward, however you'd like to look at it, that these experiences become our past. So it's literally like always looking into the unlimited, into the unknown and saying, wow, what else can I become? What else can I learn? What else can I be exposed to? What else can I find out about myself? Which is very different than if we look backwards and say, well, I only know this, or I'm good at that, or I'm not good at this, or I'm not good at that. And we say, okay, then in this moment, I can only take these actions. It's very, very filled with, in a way, doubt, self-doubt, and that usually breeds fear. And so we don't take actions that we would normally take. I mean, there are solutions that always exist. So if we think we're challenged with a particular problem, the solution is already there. Mm -hmm. We just don't always want to align to the solution because some of the solutions that, and there are usually several, aren't necessarily ones that we feel comfortable taking because we're kind of afraid. We're not sure if we do this, if we take said risk, you know, as, as a general human term, you know, how will it turn out? What if something bad happens? Well, what if something bad happens isn't coming from our future? What if something bad happens is actually coming from our past and most probably not even from our past, but something that we accepted from somebody else. In other words, in a conversation or conversations with others or reading something of other people's stories, we often take on their experiences, their interpretations, their perspectives and make them our own and never realize it. So 
in that sense, we're really saying, well, if you do this, that happens. Well, we don't really know that. You know, and I'm not suggesting in any way that people go out and take, you know, extraordinary risks and put their life in danger. We're talking about following the heart. And if we follow the heart, we will never be in those positions. It's when we follow the mind, when we follow the old emotions, when we follow the yesterdays, that's where we generally get ourselves in trouble because we keep recreating things we've already experienced. It's a well-known, worn-out pathway. It's what causes wars on the planet. Everybody believes that their particular way is right and anything that doesn't go with it is not right. This is not, a, a, you know, this particular opportunity on planet right now is to really embrace who we are. And we're, of course, seeing evidence of it. I mean, just in the last, you know, century, look at how we've gone from horse and buggy to flying off the planet into distant, you know, now even beginning to go into distant galaxies with some of our, our uh, uh, technology, you know, and things that were, you know, something that talking to somebody across the globe was really never considered. And if you could do it, it could take months before a message would reach somebody. And, and here we can have messages around the globe almost instantaneously. I mean, these the, the opportunities and the recognition of our oneness, of our collectiveness, of our interconnectedness, of our interdependence is becoming stunningly obvious. We either flow with it or we continue to resist and hold on to the old ways or hold on to the old beliefs or hold on to the old limitations. What we're talking about is letting go of the limitations, letting go of the negative, forgiving it all, forgiving whatever happened. It is in the past. Let it go. Because when we let it go from our past, it means we're no longer entertaining it in our present. When we're no longer entertaining limitation in our present, we are more open to potentials of our future. Again, not necessarily linear because we're wanting to get out of this locked in mindset of you know linear understanding because the circular flow of life is you have love within, you give love out, you give love out, you get love back. That's not necessarily a linear path. It's more of a circular path. Well, we're moving into greater understanding that wisdom is always there, always here, right now, present. And when we can tune into our wisdom, solutions, plural, are available. Now, the key for us is to figure out which one is brightest. You know, as I mentioned in our previous conversation, we do become aware of like, well, if we follow this particular path, this is the brightest for us right now. And then, of course, we will unfold because this is about learning through the experience. So to not be afraid of having an experience allows us to have an experience, and then we learn from that experience. We're learning from our experiences if we're unconscious, even though we may not be aware of it. It's just that the challenge is we learn at a different pace and often by repeating. It's kind of like we keep banging our head against the wall until we stop one moment and say, ow, that hurts. We're talking about shifting that and instead of constantly recreating negative experiences or things that are destructive or things that hurt, moving forward and saying, I'm choosing to open up to a life of joy, a life of spontaneity, a life of heartfelt understanding, a life of creativity, where I'm conscious and present right now. Again, this is how we tap the unlimited. This is how we move forward. This is how we expand who we are. And as you read in the first paragraph, you know, it's a journey in a way even without beginning because it's ongoing. And even though we will say, well, we're beginning a new journey. Well, that's not entirely true because we've been living a journey already. It's also a journey without end because why would we want to end it, enjoy it? You know, there's no end to the infinite number of things that we can experience and each one will be different in each present moment. You know, you can never dip your toe in the river twice and have exactly the same experience because the same combination isn't there. We are constantly cycling and recycling what we consider a lifetime of 50, 80, 100, 120 years these days. You know, what's that in the relative terms of the ages of the galaxies and the eternities of, you know, star particle dust, you know, that's out there and our own planet. I mean, it's just so vast and so magnificent. Why not enjoy it? You know, why, why have this such deep sense that what's right in front of us is the most horrific challenge or obstacle to overcome. Step back, look at the bigger picture. There are no walls or no boundaries. We're placing them there. We're placing them through our own design of self-protection as past, present, future orientation. Let it go, open up, 
come from love, trust love, trust the heart, trust the higher self, knows where we're going, tune into it, tap into it, flow with it, become it. Mm. That's tapping the unlimited. Mm. So when you say about trusting the higher self and, and um, tuning into it and becoming the higher self, I mean, do we, do we really, in a sense, become our higher self, or, or is it is the higher self something that can guide us in some way through our intuition, thoughts, meditation, or, or whatever? What what's our relationship with our higher self then? It's part of us. It is us. That that is the the unique connection that each of us makes. And again, when you look at this grandness, this, this infinite, this oneness of ourselves, this part of us that knows us and loves us so deeply, it is still us. Mm -hmm. The deeper we connect, the more we merge into this, this magnificence, this grandness, this oneness, this love. So the biggest difficulty we encounter in this process is our mind wants to identify, encapsulate, conceptualize, and essentially define, limit put you know some kind of relationship upon this grand self this higher self mm -hmm. and yet when you're actually having the experience there's a knowing that there's no separation and that unfolding may be very sporadic and, and almost distant and, and, and you know vacant and, and uh, you know have moments of glimpses of this grandness initially and yet as we live more with our higher self the more we become our higher self. The more we become our higher self, the more we master these, these things that have limited us in the past, the more we become one with everything, the more interconnected and interdependent we perceive life to be, the vast, the, the way our mind opens up in more vast potentials, it loses that separation. Now, if we are very mental, we are going to, pretty much fight that and continue to try to conceptualize, identify, in a way separate, because our personality ego, this this outer projection of who we strive to be based on all the myriad reasons of trying to fit in and justify our lives in relationship to those around us, or rebel from you know our lives and, and those around us. However, we are conveying ourselves out in the world. If we think we're rich or we think we're poor, these are just glamour projections of our personality ego. It's our way of trying to be part of the world without being in touch with ourselves. The more we relax that, the more we release that, the more we go into the holistic understanding of our physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual connectedness. The more we align and identify with we are spiritual beings having a human experience, the more we become observers to life while being participants and a lot of these things sound like paradoxes they sound like conundrums they you know they, they seem like infinite spirals that go nowhere and yet it is true from a limited perspective it sounds like that but the more you merge with love the more we actually open up to our potential the more potential we find and the more we just become that which we already are again these things don't fit in, the, in our linear models because they don't have conceptual places to attach. They don't have labels. And, and in fact, that's what we're actually seeking is to get rid of the labels. We're, we're striving to move beyond all this rigid definition of what life looks like and open up to grandness. Mm -hmm. So the higher self is us. And initially, yes, it's going to seem like we are perhaps very distant from that aspect of ourselves. And yet as we move beyond our limitations, the more we will just simply come from the love that is our higher self. And it will, in its own right, in our own way, in our own pathway, become necessarily us. You know, we become our higher self. Everyone will have a, their own unique interpretation of what that is, because they have countless different perspectives, you know, as we come hologram or fractal, that make up who they are. When we only see ourselves one way, then there is no room for anything else. When we see ourselves as everything and all potential, then there's room for grand creativity and grand creation. 
and grand interconnectedness, you know, and the peace that we seek so desperately in our outer world becomes the peace that we already are inside. We just relax into ourselves. Mm -hmm. That's loving unconditionally. That's that full self-acceptance. That's also when we accept ourselves, we start to accept the world around us. How do we define that? We don't. We have the experience. So when we're loving unconditionally, in a sense, we are our higher selves then. We're coming from our higher selves. We are being our higher selves. And one of the ways that, that really helps stimulate and, and encourage this, this unfolding is to maintain harmony. And, you know, this was a, a very profound simplicity that came into my life again thankfully early on is to recognize to be in a state of harmony is to be in a greater state of balance and when we are in harmony with our thoughts and our feelings when we're in harmony and balance with our body it's much easier to tune into our higher self when we're fearful when we're angry when we're you know judging when we're hating when we're filled with guilt and shame it's very difficult to tune into this greater part of ourselves because it's not vibrationally a match. It's not a resonance. We're not resonating with love in those moments. We're feeling very separate from ourselves. If we need a little tool or a little insight or a little reminder, harmony is a wonderful word that when invoked intended and continuously practiced and, and brought more uh, into our world, then it becomes, in a way, the catalyst. It helps us to tune into the balance. It helps us to be in an experience that may be perhaps frightful or engaging or challenging or, or causing us, you know, momentary reaction, you know, moving back into that old paradigm of, you know, past, present, future, remembering, trying to protect ourselves, trying to, you know, thwart off, you know, whatever we're resisting or, res you know, resenting in front of us. Harmony, a deep breath, a balance of, who we are, then all of a sudden allows the experiences, the dualities, the extremes, the positive, negative. We know where we want to go. We know where this infinite being, and now we're being faced with something that seems so overwhelming that we can't possibly overcome it. You know, that harmony says, step back, look at the bigger picture, allow the wisdom. You know, when we're in deep into anger, we're deep into reaction, there's no space for wisdom. <laughs> because we're engaged in past, we're engaged in something that doesn't allow solution. If we only focus on problems in life, we cannot allow solutions. So there's an extraordinary necessity to quiet ourselves. And harmony is kind of the, the intention that we set for ourselves. And if we maintain harmony in our physical, in our, in our thoughts and our feelings, we tune into the spiritual grandness. And in the next, um, conversation, we'll talk a little bit more about meditation and visualization uh, as a way to open up to and tune into that harmony. But it is important to recognize that we can intend harmony. And when we intend harmony, then it's easier to navigate these somewhat chaotic moments where we go backwards and forwards and, you know, we see our potential and we live very present in our limitation and then we see our potential again and then we feel the pressure of limitation because we are going through this unfolding process and you know there's a there's an unfolding that goes on there's a, a physicalness and an emotional expansion a, you know a, a letting go of our our rigid belief systems our thoughts and our thinking processes there's a movement that actually happens energetically and harmony maintaining harmony under all circumstances will guide us the best and that harmony will come from the natural state of our higher self which is in harmony with everything but harmony is a, a practical application is very fundamental in uh, helping us to maintain uh, a broader perspective as we move through these experiences. Mm. So the, the, the key elements of tapping into our higher self and our unlimited potential would be being in a, a state of harmony, joy, unconditional love, um, perhaps being more conscious of when we're not and in what ways our lives are not. And this might sound like a, a bit of a contradiction for everything we've just talked about is that we also have to feel the feelings. Mm -hmm. We have garnered and, and, and accumulated lots of feeling nature, embarrassing moments, mistakes, self-hatred, self-guilt, 
um, you know, what we would then term as, you know, blaming others for experiences. We have uh, past hurts, past mistakes, you know, we may have been faced with verbal abuse, mental abuse, physical abuse, uh, you know, various parts of our path. We may have done it in various ways with others. One of the things we do as, as humans is we tend to suppress our feelings in so many ways, especially in Western cultures. We tend to really kind of shy away and, and particularly um, masculine oriented cultures, masculine energy oriented cultures. You're not supposed to show your feminine side. You're not supposed to show the natural feminine energy, which we've explored in, in other conversations, that we are all a balance of masculine and feminine energies. Well, what happens is when you have a very patriarchal masculine oriented culture that doesn't deal with its imagination and feel its feelings, it gets suppressed. And of course, that is energy. And when you suppress energy, it builds up and builds up and builds up. And then, of course, it explodes, mm -hmm. as we often see in, you know, ways of wars and everything else on a, on a mass cultural level. Well, it also goes on in every way and every day of our personal lives. Feeling the feelings, and this, I'm not specifically, you know, limiting it here to the masculine energy, but, you know, as an, as an icon of why we often do this, it's culturally ingrained in us to not deal with, you know, our feelings of anger, rage, resentment, you know, and particularly in this case, you know, on this more conscious path, we want to feel the feelings without directing them at other people. We also want to be able to release these energies in creative ways that allow them to release. So if we feel a flash of anger, don't suppress it, let it fly out or expand in its own way, but perhaps find a more positive channel within which to release it. Feeling the feelings, of course, then gets us more to a causal level. What did we do to create it? Where did it come from originally? How do we need to forgive that aspect? If we're constantly enraged with everything and everyone, you know, we need to address that because it's not about everything and everyone, it's about us. We're the ones carrying the anger and rage. We're the ones that are carrying this highly suppressed energy. And it, you know, shows, comes into self-loathing, depression, um, you know, guilt, worry, shame, you know, those things all just really bring us down. So feeling the feelings is a way to create harmony by being the full flow of our energy. And initially, we might need to find some very constructive, creative ways. We may need to physically act it out, you know, whether it be jogging or, or using, you know, some kind of, of physical way to move this energy. It, you know, we don't want to direct it at other people because, you know, what we have within, we give out. What we give out, we're going to get back. So if we direct it out and let it out, release it through the process of forgiveness consciously, that's feeling the feelings. Because then we're forgiving their cause effect record and memory. We're forgiving the very nature of why. And when rightly done, you know, when we're truly forgiven, we forget completely how it even happened. I mean, in the early stages for me, I went through so many moments of, you know, crying and laughing. You know, another great ways of releasing um, all these energies by feeling them. I also had you know, a few moments of frustration where I would go off and, you know, scream into a pillow or, you know, have moments where I would just simply go off on a long hike, just allowing the energy to surface and, and be worked out in myself. In those early stages, there was quite a bit. And there was a lot of, you know, thoughts and feelings towards, you know, my upbringing and, and circumstances. And, and of course, I, I initially looked at everybody and everything because I was still in that outer external view that it was all everybody else's fault. When I started to accept responsibility and saw that I did the best I knew how and everyone else did the best they knew how, even if it wasn't the best that could have happened, it was the best where we were at that particular moment. Mm -hmm. And as I learned to let go, things that had been just always in my mind, always in my feeling, you know, resentments and, and justifications about how life had been, when I forgave those and let them go, I literally forgot about it. You know, when I look back on my childhood nowadays, I just have nothing but love and compassion. I have such joy. If one were to have talked to me 20 years ago, I would have looked upon my childhood quite differently. Forgiveness, true forgiveness is forgetfulness. We forget the energy associated and all that's left is the love that was there originally, compounded by all the other things that we, we put in there based on what we thought we were supposed to or our reactions. So feel the feelings. If we do this, you know, and truly feel the feelings and truly forgive, release, let it go, detach, then we will 
come to a state of harmony. We will be in a state of compassion for ourselves and for everyone around us. That's how we know that we've healed it. Because we can't remember the feelings. We no longer have an attachment to it. We, we are done. It's like, not only are we done, we can't imagine not thinking upon it without love. And it doesn't matter what the circumstance was. I mean, I've seen people who have taken, I mean, they've told me their stories of the most dramatic, most horrific things that they endured. And yet, by forgiving it, by genuinely and consciously choosing to forgive it, they released themselves and they even released, you know, physical ailments that had plagued them for years, vanished with it. This mind-body connection, there was all this emotional energy, all this stress, all this hate and anger eating away at them inside. And when they finally chose to let go of it, they healed physically, emotionally, mentally. They connected more spiritually to the grandness of themselves. So feeling the feelings is really not a contradiction, although it sounds like it. You know, again, we're talking about these, these experiences that the more we do it, the better we get. Perhaps the more challenging things can become, but the more tools and reference points we have, the understandings, we know how to look at life differently because we're being conscious creators now. We're no longer acting and reacting. We're actually consciously creating a life of joy. We're consciously creating the desire, the intention to find our potential. And the funny thing that happens with all this is when we do it, we start to have a completely different relationship with everyone and everything around us. We start to recognize that everyone else has that same potential. And we start recognizing that they're working through their activity the best way they know how. And all of a sudden we start to interact with, again, greater compassion, with greater harmony, with greater, you know, we're not trying to change them. We're just trying to be ourselves or we're not trying to be, we're being ourselves. And we're, we're letting people be and, and our relationship with all these individuals <laughs> changes rather dramatically. So our experiences change. And through this process, it is, truly necessary, and this is not this perhaps something that I did right away, so much as I figured out along the way, is we have to have infinite patience with ourselves. Not only do we trust ourselves, trust our heart, and you know, take each step from this trusting space, but have infinite patience. Because with that infinite patience, we will give ourselves the time to unfold and expand. And we will also learn to ask for help. You know, the, the help is out there, the help is within us, and it's okay to ask. So ask for a higher self for guidance, assistance, you know, allow, you know, maybe it comes through a book or tape or something that, you know, comes into our world or person, you know, the right statement at the right time, the right insight. But the difference is we're not going to follow blindly. We're now going to accept what resonates to us. You know, we're not going to seek other people for their advice and counsel. We're going to seek ourselves for advice and counsel. And then when it gets affirmed or confirmed or assisted with by outer sources, we will just know that this is the direction for us to go in. Very different than seeking. Again, we're, we're looking to our own personal strength, our own personal wisdom, trusting that. Even if some of that personal wisdom is reflected externally by others and through other means, we want to learn to really trust ourselves. And of course, we're going to need to have patience with ourselves because as I used the metaphor before, it's like an old train of belief systems coming into a station and we're getting on a shiny, sleek new train that's leaving the station and the new one's not necessarily even leaving on a track because we don't want to limit it on a linear path. We're going to say that the new uh, vehicle is unlimited. But in the overlap, you know, we need to be patient with ourselves and trust ourselves and learn to, uh, to con reconnect with ourselves because we've spent so many years of our life disconnected, we need to learn to reconnect and know what that is for ourselves. Because when we have our connection with our higher self, when we have our connection with ourself, again, try not to think of it as separation, then we will always trust ourselves in the present moment. We will act and constantly act again upon our inner wisdom and our inner guidance. And we will no longer be reliant or reactive to outer experiences. We will know the creative aspect that's within us. All of these things put together, this is how we tap the unlimited. We live it. Literally live it to the very best of our ability. There is no framework judgment. There is no goal. There is no race. There is no anything. It's simply our unfolding consciously. Because that's the whole goal of this, is we're doing it now consciously. Good. Okay. All right. Thanks very much, Harold. Until next time. Pleasure. Pleasure.